and welcome to today's video. Today I'm super excited, I mean I'm not excited about the mess I'm about to make, but I'm super excited about the outcome of what could potentially be amazing. So if you have Super Shock Shadows by Colourpop, I have quite a few, I have like trays upon trays. Now I love the Super Shock Shadow, however I'm not gonna lie I don't get around to using them as often as I'd like, and because they're slightly emollient and slightly creamier, they dry out on like a powdered shadow so I find that really frustrating and if you saw my makeup what did I call it the makeup mashup I think it was where I kind of like mashed up loads of makeup and just had fun with it crushing it smushing it making it like one of those snapchat so satisfying videos I'll link that up in the cards as well if you want to go see that it's kind of just like a little 10 minute video of me mashing up makeup and just having something very aesthetically pleasing to just watch, you know, it's like a visual ASMR. Um, but when I was doing that, I was crushing up a Colourpop Super Shock Shadow, and I found that adding a particular oil was making it more emollient, and I was crushing it, and I was adding this oil, and I was stirring it, and I was like, wait, what? Have I just brought this crumbly ass shadow back to life? Yes, I did. I couldn't actually believe that I'd fixed my Super Shock Shadow because it was so crumbly and so dry and it was just like no pigment whatsoever. So I thought today um, I would literally just zoom you back into the table below me like I normally bring over my little desky table thing like I do in a couple of videos when it's just my hands being shown. Um, and we'd kind of like basically just rejuvenate all of my dry ass Colourpop shadows. I will be steering away from the um, what are these actually called? The Super Shock Extremes because these actually have glitter infused in them. I'll just show them to you now. There are a lot in my collection that aren't dry and they're still wet and they're still going and I absolutely love that. But I want to bring a couple of shadows, like a couple of them are just a little bit cracked, like this one. Um, I've just went to go show the shadow and it just fell out of the pot. So do you see what I mean here? So this is just fallen out of the pot because it's so dry, like it's so dry, it's cracking, um, there's still pigment to it, like when you swatch it there's still pigment there, but it's not what it used to be and it's not reaching its full potential. I'll stop talking in a minute, but the idea today is to basically rejuvenate my shadows. I've had a look at the Inglot Duraline and apparently that's supposed to be really great for hydrating them, but I never really got around to using it. And then in my makeup mashup video, I simply just used an MUA Pro Base Primer Oil. I'm not gonna lie to you, I have no idea what type of oil this is. I'll put it down in the description bar below, but I just bought loads of oils from MUA because they were like three pounds each. And this is the one I used in my makeup mashup video. It's the Pro Base with Gold Flakes. Um, but I've also got the normal one here, which is just the Pro Base Primer Oil, which is, they're literally the same, but one's got gold flakes in. They're literally exactly the same oil. So I'm hoping I can just use the normal oil. But then again, I do have two of these. So I feel like I might just use the gold flakes and be bougie. I mean, they do like disintegrate inside, so. Um, anyway, we're gonna just be using these oils, they're hydrating oils, um, and they're really, really cheap, so I'm not bothered about using these. I'd rather use these and restore my $5, which is about £3.50 Colourpop shadows, with a £3.50 oil. You know, you know where I'm going with this? I had a Colourpop, here it is, here it is. So I used the shade Seeker, and I hydrated this with an oil. Now, I know it looks pretty messy, but it's just like so pigmented again and I feel like if I can just not use so much oil so it's not too wet I can really bring these shadows back to life like this looks stunning and this never looked this pigmented so I feel like I can really rejuvenate these shadows instead of throwing them away because that's what I was going to do without further ado I've spoken enough let's get and fix my shadows Hello, it's me, voiceover make here. So let's get straight into this. As you can see, my technique here is to basically just chop up the shadow with my little metal tool. You can buy these on Amazon and eBay and places like that. It's just a makeup mixer. It comes with like a, a mixer palette thing, it's like a spatula. Uh, so yeah, just cutting it all up and then I'm gonna add a few drops of the MUA Pro Base Oil. Uh, I chose to use the Golden Flakes just because I had two bottles of them, but I'm sure it doesn't really matter. I'll link the type of oil that it is in the description bar was I do not know currently but I'll link it below um, and I was just kind of eyeballing how much I needed so yeah just cutting it up maybe a few drops of it like five or six drops something like that like I said I'm eyeballing each of them because to be honest some are more emollient than others so 
they needed less oil than the really really dry ones that needed a bit more so yeah um, as I've been talking you can see that I've just been mixing it all together with the fine choppings and the oil and make sure it blends nicely and that I'm trying to remove as many lumps as possible just so that the application on the eyes will be as smooth as possible later down the line I don't want like loads of lumpy bits to be all over my eyelids and crease and be all yucky I want it to be as smooth as possible um so yeah if I needed a few more drops of oil I just add more and then when I'm happy with the consistency I just kind of pat and smooth them about but you can kind of see what I'm on about uh, anyway but um I do actually wipe it down as well in between each shadow like this one here the orange one is really bright and it was quite messy like the really deep burgundy one so um I advise that you if you want to do this technique to do it on a table or a wipeable surface and to have like a damp cloth to hand just to wipe in between um because the technique itself is quite messy so you don't want to get up and any upholstery or anything but um this orange shadow as well here is a good example of what a lot of them were like in terms of being so dry that it just cracked and fell out like a little coin or something out of the pan so the ones like this needed a bit more chopping up and a little bit more oil to blend better I actually found that the more matte finish shadows were more difficult to make smooth again but obviously not it's not completely impossible it just took a bit more time um I smoothed it out then kind of realised that I needed to chop up a little bit more so they took a little bit more time than the shimmery or glittery ones um, again like this one here this like sort of tan colour it was really really dry and it was a matte shadow but it had a tiny bit more shimmer or like satinness to it than the orange one so uh, it kind of just blended a little bit better but yeah it's just different consistencies and you're kind of it's trial and error a little bit I think um I just noticed a difference in consistencies and yeah so something I thought about when you're doing this technique is that it's probably only a good technique if you have a lot of shadows to revive like I do because if you have a good handful then buying the oil which is about five pounds is you know it's going to be pointless if you've only got one or two shadows because they're about three pound fifty anyway so it'd just be cheaper to repurchase a particular shadow but uh if you've only got a couple or a handful it might be worth doing um as you can see here i've also started to swatch a couple of them so you can just sort of see the before and after it is sped up so you might uh you might kind of only see a glimpse of them but i started to swatch them and they're a bit sheer and a bit skippy and then when i've done this technique you'll see that it's just really full of pigment and it is a little bit more ammonia is a little bit more wet than maybe when it was first bought but it's definitely revived them and to be honest with you i have so many that i just wanted to give it another life you know at least another attempt you can kind of see there um before i threw it away just at least try and give it one more final hurrah um i also tried to do some of my super shock cheek bronzer and blushes and they had a similar consistency but i think they are a different formula in like in general they are a very different formula because they go on the cheeks you know i blended it did the oil and you can see me swatching it there it's like full pigment but it's kind of lost that shimmer whereas this blush here that i'm cutting up they were just kind of a little bit more jellyish um, when i was cutting up so i noticed that, that if you want to do your cheek and bronzers um, if in the super shock formula it doesn't it doesn't quite turn out quite the same it definitely revived them um, I've currently cut one on my cheeks as I'm talking now and it definitely works it doesn't break up my makeup because of the oil um, but it's just not it's not the way I bought it originally so I don't think that it's going to be brand brand new but Again, it gives it another life. It's better than throwing it in the bin, especially if you enjoy the colour. Towards the end, I found that some of the shadows were only very slightly dry and I didn't really want to start chopping them up because I thought it was going to be a little bit pointless um, just because they weren't completely like dried out like a little coin, like falling out. Um, so I just put a few drops of the oil on top to revive that top layer to see if that would work. And the ones that had more glitter in were kind of just smearing about so maybe the glitter ones probably don't work with this technique if you're just gonna put a few drops of oil but the matte ones and the satin ones definitely worked so I just dropped a few drops of the oil on top and kind of smeared it about with my finger and it seemed to work perfectly fine um, obviously this is just like a quick fix um, so if you don't really want to chop up all of your shadows but you just want to give it a bit more emollient feel to it maybe that would be a great way uh, I saw one of you guys said that spraying MAC Fix Plus on top of it brings it back to life I haven't actually tried to that so admittedly I, I don't know what the outcome of that would be so I'm, I'm not going to recommend it to you in, on the basis that I haven't tried it myself um, but you know if you've got Mac Fix Plus and you're willing to experiment then maybe give that a go because I saw that someone said that that was a quite effective way of 
bringing them back to life um, and giving them some more pigment so you could try that but apart from that that is it I hope that this has been helpful in some way for you especially to those of you who are like me who own quite a few super shock shadows and you're not quite ready to get rid of them yet if you have any other techniques of reviving these little guys then please do comment them down below so we can all help each other out and yeah that's all from me thank you so much for watching I hope this has been helpful or just something interesting to watch uh, subscribe if you haven't already ring the bell if you want to see more videos from me I upload every single week and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!